Hello, you are listening to Omnitalk's Retail Fast Five, brought to you in partnership with the A&M Consumer and Retail Group, Firework, SPS Commerce, and Suzzle. All right, let's move on to headline number five, Chris. Gap has a new CEO. I can't wait to ask you about this one. Um, Okay, according to CNBC, last week, Gap named former Mattel exec Richard Dixon. Another (laughs) great name. We have got some all Dick Dixon. Dick Dixon. (laughs) Dick Dixon. (laughs) I'm sure he's never heard that before. (laughs) Yeah. Dick Dixon is the new CEO after a year-long search. Dixon, the former, or the toy maker's former president and chief operating officer is credited with reviving the Barbie franchise during his tenure. Dixon, who has been a member of Gap's board since November of 2022, will leave his current position at Mattel on August 3rd and start the new role on August 22nd, earning an annual base salary of $1.4 million. Chris? Yes. Gap, give us your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, actually, as you, you as you just read that, there was something I didn't catch too. Like November was it 2020, Dixon? Yeah, it wasn't Dick Dixon, although okay. you know I do love a good alliteration. Um, it was actually the board tenure is not that long, really, when you think yeah. about it. Like he's yeah. been there like seven months at, at yeah. the end of the day, and this was in flight well before it was announced too. So like that that actually makes me a little even more skeptical of what we've got here. Mm. Um, so I don't know what you think. I have not talked to you about this, so I have no idea what your thoughts are, but. Um, I am actually a little skeptical of this, and okay, um, why? Because you know, lifetime gapper started my career there in San Francisco. Shout out to all my friends that are still there, still working there, still participating in our content daily, uh, weekly. Um, it gives me Paul Pressler flashbacks. Um, Who's and so Paul the, Pressler, Paul, great question. So Paul Pressler was named CEO. He succeeded Mickey Drexler. Okay, this was in the early two thousands, probably like two thousand two, two thousand three, maybe even two thousand one. I don't remember the exact date, but that dude flamed out really quickly. It was, I would say it was almost an unmitigated disaster. He was from Disney and, you know, they made all these, they tried to make all these connections between Disney and the gap. And at the time he, I think he ran Disney stores even. So the connections was even a little more probable than the same Mattel. Okay. Um, and, and so my concerns there is like, we're that is the board forcing the connection here between running a toy brand and running a apparel brand. Now, with that said, if I look at his resume, and that's what I do because I don't know him personally. I'm just basing this on my resume review. He does have a weird four-year stop as CEO of the Jones Apparel Group between 2010 and 2014, which he left Mattel to go to. And then, interestingly enough, returned to Mattel afterwards. So Maybe my he question just wanted is, to change the pace. Maybe he was yeah, like, no, Meh. Yeah, no, but my question is, if you're an apparel guy and that's what you're really Fair. good at, why would you jump back to Mattel after leading the Jones group. Is it because your heart's really in CPG or the wholesale side of the business too? Like Jones sounds like Jones group has some wholesale, uh, you know, is part partly the, that's a big piece of the business. Maybe that's a tell to where he thinks gap needs to take the business. We've talked about them selling on Amazon. We've talked about potentially, you know, that angle before, and, and maybe that is what they need to do. Yeah. So I don't know. It just brings back a lot of scar tissue for me. Mm-hmm. And for those reasons that I just said, it worries me a lot because the skills that it takes to lead like Barbie right, right, are very different than the skills it's going to take to reform, you know, Gap. And the other part too is I have to think the Barbie success created a bias around his performance. For sure. Which if you're not careful is probably the equivalent of beer goggles in a CEO search. That's what I think, you know, I mean, that's the best way I could put it. Like, it's going to be like, oh, that person looks much more attractive then he probably really is in real, you know, in all actuality. And you can get carried away with those things very easily. Look at Mark Tritton, Bed Bath & Beyond, same thing. So much is success attributed to him from Target, which if you talk to the insiders, it's like Target was always doing that and massive flame out at Bed Bath & Beyond. So anyway, net net, long story long, I'm skeptical. I'm worried based on previous patterns I've seen in history at The Gap. Yeah, I I don't have much more to add, although I love Gap and I wish that it would thrive but i i don't really know that this is the guy that can fix it is is it a branding issue like i really think that it's deeper i think it's the i think gap is selling a product that is no longer unique like there's too many people out there doing basics especially in the direct to consumer space with purpose behind them that gap just needs to, to figure out another way that they're going to provide a unique point of view or a more pointed fashion approach i think to to stay relevant i don't think it's creating basics for all anymore and i think that's where 
you know, this guy, even with his even with his background in some apparel, like I really feel like you need somebody who's more of like a fashion director to go in there and figure out how to take, you know, the stuff we talked about two weeks ago, the the j- denim jacket, the vintage gap that's selling so well online right now. Like, is there a way to capture that nostalgia and bring that into the new designs that they're putting out and not just be focused on on mass anymore? I think I think it could survive if you can get somebody in there. And, and that's where I'd be focused. I don't know that I'd be focused on a marketing bringing a marketing person in, but yeah, yeah, you're right. It, it needs both. Ultimately, yeah. it needs yeah. a merchandising point of view with a good marketing plan behind it that coordinates yes. and complements that merchandising point of view. And it needs it across all the brands too. We sometimes talk about Gap ubiquitously, like it's the Gap brand here, but it's really Gap, Banana, Old Navy, Athleta, Athleta. all those together that need that point of view and that supercharging from both those things happening at the same time. And yeah, I just don't know that four years of an apparel gra- background prove to me that he has the merchant shops right. to lead that. But maybe he does. Maybe he does. I don't know. All right, but Chris. I have let's, skepticism. 